Welcome everybody to P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, February the 4th, 2018. Uh, many of y'all may know it as Super Bowl Sunday. And um, I'm Pastor Darren Moore coming to you live from Portsmouth, Virginia. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for guiding us throughout this week, God. I thank you for new life that you've given us, God, and I thank you for the power of your word. Father, I pray that you will encourage us today, God. Restore unto us everything that we've used up, Lord God, and have lost throughout this week. But I pray, God, that you will give us direction for not just this week, but direction for our lives as we strive to grow closer to you and love you more. We thank you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, that's what's up. Okay, so again, uh, we'd like to welcome everybody. And thank you all so much for sharing the stream with us uh, today. Um, I'm excited today um, about uh, P-Town Fresh and just the chance to come together with everyone. Um, of course, as we have mentioned, it is Super Bowl Sunday. Seems like we got some serious lag on the stream. But yeah, uh, we have uh, today is Super Bowl Sunday, and as you can all see, who we're uh, going for, but um, also I'm going to share. Turn the camera around. Thank you. Thank you, Patriots Nation over here in the balcony. Thank you. So y'all see, y'all see. All right. So anyway, now one of the things here I do want to share with y'all is um I did post a a video um on my page and I need to make sure that I share it to the P Town Fresh page. Um. And it was an awesome video of a young man who plays for the Eagles. And he shared how discipleship is the goal of his life. You know, and that was something that was real encouraging to me to hear this young man talk about. And, and you know, so when you get a chance, just check out that um, story. It was awesome. You know, especially how he just recently came to Christ about a year ago. You know, he heard some of this. Uh, he said he basically saw his um teammates you know and they they were kind of standard him you know every time he lost a game he went down you know he won a game he was up but he had no real stability no real inner peace and so he saw some of his teammates and they were like you know straight they were good and so he they ended up uh connecting with him and um he ended up giving his life to the lord and getting baptized and you know the whole nine so to me that was something that was very encouraging to see that so um, when you get a chance check out that video it's real cool and now today uh, we are talking in second pro oh, excuse me Hebrews well, chapter 8 Hebrews. and uh, <laughs> I want to ask a question for you today um, has anyone ever broken an arrangement or an agreement with you has anybody ever broken an arrangement or an agreement with you? Now, I want to go, I'm going to uh, go ahead and share first quickly on this one. And uh, my wife will probably remember this one. Uh, years ago, when we were at our old house on Horn Avenue, which is for sale, so anybody want to buy a beautiful house, check out 906 Horn Avenue. Shout out to my man Dominic Epps, uh, King Quality Real Estate. Um, who's uh, checking us out as well. He's our, our realtor. He'll help you out with that. But um, I remember when we had that, when we uh, had moved into the house, and we decided that we wanted to get some trees cut. <laughs> and so I remember this one. <laughs> we shopped around to try to find somebody, you know, with reasonable prices and quality work. Okay. So we got this one company, and now mind you, we're not talking about no little small apple tree, something like that. We're talking about a long, a huge pine tree that's been around probably since the uh, house was built, since like the 60s. So this thing was huge, and as a result, two trees. oh, they're right, there were two, two trees. Two there were two of them, and so they were supposed to cut down the trees. I think we gave them like a certain amount on a deposit and following after everything was supposed to be, you know, they were supposed to come finish the job. They, they went up there, they got there quick, 
man, they had the ropes in there. <laughs> Boom. Stayed, stayed there. We, th- we were like, okay, we good. Little did we know, they never took the ropes down. They never cut the tree down. And we wasted a lot of money. We were very upset in the way in which they uh, defaulted in their dealings. A- anybody out there can identify with something like that? I can identify with the heartbreak. You can identify with the heartbreak? Okay, Keith. All right. So, um, and oh, I know what's one thing. I know I was missing something. Okay. I gotta have all these devices. Yeah. All right, so um, we'll t- t- who wants to share? All right, well we'll go with Keith first. Um, so I had this this date set up with this pretty nice girl, <laughs> and uh, if anybody who knows me, when I get something like this set up, I'm really ecstatic about it. And the day of, it didn't fall through. I hit her up, checked her up. Nothing happened, and my whole day was crushed. And that's why I started identify with uh, dad when he said he was heartbroken about all that money he put into it. And um, yeah, she broke the arrangement. Um, still waiting on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. And who else wants to share? All right. Uh, Keontae. Yeah. It was a couple of years ago. I was working at Family Dollar. I was. Uh, I was supposed to be able to come get a get a, a promotion to uh, assistant manager, mm-hmm. and um, Eric they was talking to me like, "Yeah, man, you know, we're looking at you for the position, blah blah blah." And then they, they were trying me out the week of, and then when it came down to it, they were, they, they didn't want me in a position, but I, I didn't know that at the time. So they, what they tried to do, they tried to uh, get me out of there as fast as they could, so they can bring in who they wanted to bring in. So it kind of made me you know sad. what? I, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I, I ain't saying over again either. <laughs> yeah, I said one no, more time. No, one more time. I'm sorry, I forgot the camera. I'm so, so sorry. I was... After that, I went to Walmart. Yep. <laughs> 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 they said they, they heard my voice. Well, did, you, oh, did, you get, did you get me, though? All right. No. 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 Nope. 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 Yeah. No. But, but Isaiah responded. Yeah. To Isaiah, Isaiah responded to Keith. Isaiah said, Keith, I feel you, Keith. I set up a date with a chick, too. She told me she wanted to take me out. I get in the tag and she doesn't respond to any of my messages. You aren't alone, bro. Thank you, Isaiah. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you were taking this? <laughs> all right. She must have Then, yeah. Well, as you all know, my dear darling brother is an awesome drawer. So, well, I decided to ask ask him if he could draw me something. He was like, sure, but I'm in a business, so you have to pay me. Mm. So, I gave him $2, right? <laughs> yes. $2. <laughs> yes. Hey, what kind of name is mine? You're What's up? I need some shirts. No, but, like, I'm, I'm the little sister. Like, my brother, he's an awesome drawer, so he said, I'll give you a discount, give you $2. So, you know, I'm going to be free. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, I'm not going to go into that. So, you know, I, I go and say, Graham, you can't get $2. I owe Xavier something. So she was like, well, here's your $2, so I give him Xavier. A day later, Xavier, where's my dog? I'm not done with it. <laughs> a week, Xavier, where's my dog? He was like, I have not, I'm not done with it. Xavier, I'm not gonna say his middle name, Daniels, where is my drawing? He was like, oh yeah, I didn't tell you. I never did it. <laughs> so you just paid me, like, you just gave me free money. Dang. Wow. Hey, I'm awesome. still, I, no, I'm still mad at him and he knows that. I'm still mad at him. Oh, we would have had to shoot the service, dude. I know, right? You know, <laughs> How are you gonna hustle your sister over that? Hey, right, right. <laughs> no, he knows, I'm still mad at him about that. Wow. Everybody just pray for Danielle. Lord, just just help Danielle. And, as a matter of fact, Lord, just help all these people that feel some kind of way right now, God. <laughs> he cheated me. I feel so. I ended up getting a better job. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a better job. I tell you, used that money for candy. Keontae at least got a better job. You're the only one straight. <laughs> it's all right. So, listen up. So, thank y'all so much for sharing your uh, wonderful experiences. Um, I want to say also what's up to my man, uh, my brother uh, Mike Kinzora. Welcome, sir. And also, uh, Dr. Selby. Welcome, sir. All right. So, um, our section today, what we're going to talk about, we've been talking in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 8. And I want you to consider and remember that question that I asked you. Uh, we'll see how that relates to today's message. Um, now, if you've never been with us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God 
and we utilize technology. So um, it's very interactive. So, you know, as we're going through and reading, um, you know, and discussing, if you have any questions, you're able to ask questions relevant to the topic. Um, I'll also ask questions and comment. So, it's a, you know, what I like to call an interactive sermon, so to speak. But with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and begin reading in Hebrews chapter 8. And uh, last time, I think we got through 1 through 6, so we're going to pick up with verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with the, their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant. And I disregarded them, says the Lord. Hey, Pastor Dan, for me and my friend, where are you at again? I'm in Hebrews chapter 8. Okay, verse what? Right now, I'm about to read verse 10. Okay, okay. Alright. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to, the, to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. In that, he says, a new covenant. He has made the first, excuse me, obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Wow. That's a lot there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a mouthful. So how are we going to break this down today? I'm glad you asked. Um, so first off, as we remember, we're reading this passage and this is a, a letter to the Hebrews. And this letter was written to a group of believers in uh, in Jerusalem and in, in well not just in Jerusalem but in this area in this time span that have come to faith in Christ now they were a minority because at this point most of the people that had come to Christ were Gentiles and so now at this point we're trying to encourage the Jews encourage those well not I'm not gonna say the Jews but encourage these Hebrew believers, these Hebrew Christians, all right, and they had now come to faith, and so there were a couple of things that they were feeling some kind of way about, and but in this point, we were coming to give them, God is coming to give them clear understanding and direction, okay, so there are a couple of things that we want to talk about, so we talked about one big theme here was the theme of Jesus being the what? The high priest. Okay. And so they talked about the high priest according to the old covenant. And now we have according to the new covenant that Jesus is the high priest. And we talked about that. Well, how can Jesus be a high priest if he didn't come from the tribe of Levi? Jesus, if you follow his ancestry back, came from the tribe of Judah. So therefore, he would not have been qualified to be able to be a priest. So... But we understand that Jesus was made a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Because if we remember in the book, in the, uh, book of Genesis, in the early Genesis, I think it was Genesis maybe 14, um, Abraham was walking and encountered. Uh, he was coming back from the war. He had just slaughtered some kings to rescue his nephew Lot. And when he was coming back, he happened upon this gentleman who came up to him name uh, and he was his name was Melchizedek and he was a priest and he also was a king and so the Bible says that Abraham paid or Abram at that time paid tithes to Melchizedek so as saying that of course you know and then at the same time Melchizedek threw a big feast for Abraham and blessed him 
All right, and so this was a foreshadowing. Um, even and also one unique thing we hear about Melchizedek was that he had no what mother nor father. We couldn't trace his ancestry, and so we tend to believe. Many scholars believe that he may have been um, a pre-incarnate representation of Jesus. So, and now we're bringing us, which brings us to here. And we talked about last week where it says for every priest and just a little review of uh, verse three of Hebrews chapter eight, every priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And we talked about the sacrifices that Jesus offered. He offered and said that, you know, if, if everybody just wanted, if God wanted a normal, regular, everyday run of the mill sacrifice, he would have used the same old order. But. And when it came time for Jesus to give a gift and her sacrifice, just like any priest would, he gave the greatest gift that there was. He gave his what? Life. His life. All right. And so, and, and now, it, and then we pick up and it's shared how also that was a shadow of the heavenly things being of the heavenly tabernacle. But so now we talk about, pick up here in verse six and seven, it says, but now, he has obtained a more excellent ministry and as much he is also a mediator of a better covenant who's that he jesus. jesus good which was established on better promises so first thing he says for if that covenant had been faultless so first off what is a covenant, a covenant. who can tell me what a covenant is all right danielle like some type of contract Okay, some type of contract or form of contract. Okay, anyone else? I would say agreement, but yeah, she got on. An agreement. Okay. All right. Good. Um, also, I'd like to welcome Jay Hill as well as uh, Saran uh, LaFrance Day. Welcome, welcome. And um, as we're talking about this here, this term covenant, we got to understand what this represents. This represents an agreement. This represents um, something that is binding. Okay, it, you, uh, it's more than just a, hey, okay, yeah, you're going to be there. Okay, I got you. It's, it's more to the point of a contractual agreement where it's signed. As a matter of fact, in the Hebrew, um, the word that is used for covenant actually implies cutting. Okay, now you're like, cutting agreement? What, what in the world does it sound like? Well, let's bring it to context. How many of you have heard of the term or remember, and this is more for the guys, I don't know if the girls may have done something like this, but the guys, I remember growing up, we did this thing called Blood Brothers. Mm -hmm. Nope. And anybody heard of that? Nope. So, I heard of it. Nope. Now, with Blood Brothers, what you did was you, 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 you cut your hand, yeah. you, one brother cut the hand, the other brother cut the hand, and then they you know, dap each other up or whatever. And so it was a mixing of the blood. Now, even in the Bible, uh, in, in that culture, one of the things they did when they did covenant or cut covenant was they did the same thing, but instead, and this might sound a little crazy, they sucked the blood oh. of the other person. But why? Because they thought that that would be able to get into their bloodstream. You understand what I'm saying? So, but, so are, are you seeing that there's, there's a level of, of, you don't just do that with anyone, do you? Because <laughs> no. I ain't doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's called, they, they must have had all types of diseases. That's so. not <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it's so, the principle of it, though. It sets a good principle. It sets a good yeah, principle. Good. Now, I want to make sure that we understand okay. a couple of things. So, the first covenant, um, and welcome, Xavier. Uh, you need to make sure, Xavier, you uh, check out from the beginning later on, because... You were the talk of the town. No. Nah. <laughs> I love you. All right. So, but here's the deal. So, in the original covenant that God made with Abraham, one of the things that God had Abraham to do, if you remember carefully, um, God said, God was about to, and he told Abraham to go and make a sacrifice. And he took his, who, what? His son. His son. His son, Isaac, and he took him on the mountain and then, you know, he's like, okay, dad, wow, okay, wow, I, I like this trip, where are we going? Okay, cool. Uh, wow, I see all the burnt wood, I see the wood, 
Man, we gonna have to sacrifice that? Where the sacrifice? You. I don't see the lamb. I don't see. And he's and Abraham told him, God will provide the sacrifice. And so, literally, when Abraham was about to slay his son as a sacrifice, God said, "Do no harm to him. Hold up. I want you to do me a favor. Look over there, and there's a there's a ram. Watch this." In the bush over there. Offer that. That's where the saying a ram in the bush comes from. And so in offering that um in offering that ram, and then so God saw the faithfulness of Abraham. And he says, You know what? Man, Abraham is my that's my dog, that's my man. I love this brother. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this covenant. And with Isaac, who was his firstborn and only his only natural son, as far as through him and his wife, because his wife was beyond childbearing years, Sarah. Then what ended up happening was Isaac was circumcised as part of this covenant that God had with Abraham, which then extended to all generations of Israel. Is that making sense? Y'all following along? Yeah, we got you. And so as a result of this, this was, and, and notice, what did you see in the time of circumcision? What is there? There was a cutting. Y'all with me now? And so that was, now it's uncomfortable, especially because <laughs> anybody who decided that they wanted to become a Jewish follower or follower of Judaism from that time on, in order to do so, let's say you were just a happy-go-lucky Gentile, just you know doing your Gentile thing, and following your pagan gods, all of that. But then you decided that you wanted to follow the God of Israel. One of the things you had to do, and let's say you were about you know a, a, a gentleman such as myself, about forty-two years of age, you had to go and be circumcised. It's before anesthesia, right? This was, yes, before anesthesia. You know, I'm sure they probably gave him a little something, whatever. I don't know, but, you know, they didn't have a shot to knock him out. You know, if they wanted to knock him out back then, they probably had to hit him upside the head with a bottle. I doubt that they did that. So. Uh, that would have been better, but, you know. But are, are, are you wondering? <laughs> this, this is. So, now, this is a, a serious process, right? And this was all representative of what? That first covenant that first agreement between God and his children his people which was who Israel now which brings us to Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now that we understand the context of this a little bit so in, in, pardon me not verse 1 verse 7 excuse me he says for if that first covenant had been faultless then no place would have been sought for a second. So meaning that if that first agreement, that whole first plan and op uh, operation and way of doing things was fine, we wouldn't have needed a second covenant. God would have been like, okay, that's good. It, it is done. 